Hey everybody, a uh, sad Wednesday, very close to Oscar Sunday 2020, and on Oscar Sunday, actually 10 years ago, I went to 2010, yeah, I went to cover the Night of 100 Stars Oscar party for the first time in Beverly Hills when it was at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and I went for an early brunch at but it's still one of my favorite places, the Polo Lounge, in that uh, great hotel. And uh, as I was sitting there dressed in my tux, I um, saw this really tall woman go by. And I thought, my lord, who is that? And uh, Gams. And it turned out to be the wife of the man that was with her as they were walking by, George Hamilton. And then I wondered, where are they headed? So they walked down and they turned left and went to the extreme other corner of the dining room I was in, and they sat down at this booth in the corner, and the silhouette of the man that they were sitting with, um, the profile, was that of none other than Kirk Douglas. But then another man joined them, and I'm thinking, God, that guy looks familiar. Who is that man? And just, I just racked my brains. I was afraid to go over, even though I was pretty sure I knew who that guy was, Mom. I was pretty sure. And um, I thought, I know who that is. I know who that is. But, and then, but I was just starstruck, you know? Just, oh, they'll shout me away. They'll do all that. Because that actually did happen to me once before. I'll explain that. Anyway, uh, after... My first night of her stars Oscar party and my trip back to the polo lounge and then home and everything, I finally realized, I saw a photograph, looked around, and it turned out the fellow that I thought I knew was actually someone that I had been acquainted with through social media, specifically Twitter. He was none other than Stephen Fry, the famous British actor who for years was the host of the BAFTAs, the UK's version of the Academy Awards. So since we were both connected on Twitter, I sent him a private message, or as I say, a DM. And I said, was that you sitting with Kirk Douglas at the Beverly Hills Hotel? And he wrote, yes, why didn't you come on over? I thought, you gotta be kidding me. And I had, I had not met Stephen Fry before. And I actually don't know how he wound up following me because I didn't know who he was at the time. I mean, I certainly have known since then, right? But I missed an opportunity to meet Kirk Douglas and Stephen Fry in person. And the sad part about all of that is that now that Kirk Douglas is gone, I will never, at least on this earth, get that chance again. The lesson is don't ever think of yourself as less than, don't ever think of yourself as if you don't belong because you always belong. In fact, that the opposite happened to me in terms of how I was treated when I was on CNN as a guest in New York. And afterward, a group of us went to a restaurant in the Times Square, Times Square building, uh, the not Times Square building, but the um, Times, Time Warner Center, excuse me. And Goldie Hawn was at the other end. And the people I was with, they uh, Katie was from Kansas. She was one of the people on the show with us. She was 18 years old, had never been out before, and was just, you know, wide-eyed and wanted to meet Goldie Hawn, but she was afraid. So uh, I made up for her, and I went over, and I introduced myself, and I said, uh, we're, we were all on CNN, and one of my friends wanted to meet you. She's very much afraid, so I came over on her behalf because she asked if I would go over or somebody would go over and I said I would. And to my, to this day disappointment, a person who claimed to be a friend of hers started berating me. Yeah, you should not, can't you see we're talking? You're not supposed to be here. Why are you interrupting us? And I said, sir, I don't know if you heard what I said, but I will repeat, I, sir, I don't want to be here. Which means I'm not only am sorry to interrupt you, but I have other things that I would rather do than be in this position. But it wasn't enough for him. And he just kept on. And I finally said, sir, would you please stop doing that? 
I'll be out of the way in a moment, but I really wish that you would stop behave doing that. And to her credit, Miss Hahn says, you know, asked him to stop and said, it's okay, we un understand. But I have experience of, you know, people being buttholes because they think that, that they're all that and you're nothing but nothing and they can talk to you like a junkyard dog, which I would not put up with. So that did inform why I didn't go over to, um, yeah, to say hello, you know. But then I realized that you should never let, there's an old saying, you know, one monkey don't stop no show, right? And I should not have let that monkey stop my show, which is a lesson to everybody out there. Don't let any monkey stop your show. If you have a chance to meet anyone that you wanted to meet in your life, do it. Because those chances don't come every day. And like today, those chances are going to be taken away from you for the rest of your life. And, and really, those people, all of them have different ha size. And some of the uh, movie stars and the greatest ones that I've met through the years has been the nicest to me. I think about Liz Taylor. I was so wide-eyed. I was just thrilled to death. I was jumping up and down in my clothes almost. I was on my lunch hour. And when she found out that we were fans to that extent, she came over. And we did get to see how good-looking that lady was. I could not believe it. Her eyes was, when they say Val, they were Val. She had on a pink, she had on a white mink coat and a hat to match. <laughs> Hair, I mean, she was just gorgeous. See, my mom is going to take you just a second. But, hey, mom. Ah! Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> so anyway, mom is... Yeah, mom don't like to take pictures when she does not have her clothes on. I can talk. Oh, she has her I clothes can... on, so it's, well, it's you know... Well, I don't have my decent clothes on. Oh. So. Anyway. Getting ready for bed. However, nah. um, there are some people in this world, you think about them, some of them are gone, but they were absolutely exquisite people. And some of them were total assholes. Lena Horn, one of the nicest people I've ever met. Um, she, I was telling her how good, because I, I tell you how good looking you were. I tell even people now that's not movie stars how good looking they are. This is something that sometimes people are extremely good looking, have no idea about it. They are um, what you call uncomfortable. They're, there's words for they have complexes because they don't really accept themselves as who they are. Some people are good looking inside and out and you meet those and some you know who are jerks, big jerks. So, and it's a good thing to know that. It's a good thing to practice being nice to everybody. So I'm nice to everybody and I'm telling you, I expect everybody to be nice to me because I know God made all of us and nobody's greater than the other and you can just die in an instant and he doesn't care who you are. You're gone. I hey, realize that as a really little girl. What do you remember most about Kirk Douglas who lived until he was 103? He wow. was just good looking and a good actor. That's all <laughs> I remember. He was not ever in any kind of... Uh, Scandals, um, he, it was just, it, there was a lot of articles about he and his kids, uh, but m most of the time it was about movies. Um, well, that's about it. There was just nothing that you had to, some people you have to, they go through the smell test with me before I even see them. You heard a lot of bad stuff and you don't even want to see them. Or either you want to be curious and really see who, what is this idiot about? <laughs> That's why I don't understand the world now. We used to, as this country, we used to really uh, push for the best that you could be. I mean, that's with everything. That's why, as far as they talk about the black American, he's a little different because he's, he, he really relishes the ones that do. They relish the good things that, that's there because they were so hard to come by. And I think that's with lots of people. So that's why you can sort of look at even the election and sort of figure out next time who's going to win. Oh. I don't... Um, who's your... What's your favorite Kirk Douglas movie? Uh, Spartacus, really. That was some movie. See, mine was 20,000 Leagues. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The uh, Disney 
movie with the my favorite mm -hmm. my favorite submarine, the Nautilus. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was in so mm -hmm. he was in so many. Goodness. Yeah, he sure was. A hundred and three years old, so God really loved him. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I just wanted to share that. Uh, my mom, my lovely mom, doesn't want to be on camera tonight, so um, you can hear her voice. Anyway, <laughs> subscribe to Zenny62, and please share what thoughts you have about Kirk Douglas. And uh, don't forget, or share, you know, circumstances where you were either afraid to meet a movie star and didn't, or fought through it and did, and what happened. Uh, because, and I have to say on that note, I want to thank those of you who stop and, and that's still a surprise to me, recognize me, and that's why I make videos when I do meet you, unless, of course, you're law enforcement, because law enforcement doesn't like to be photographed. The cop police says, no, 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 but we love your videos. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but I want to thank you because it means a lot that people actually pay attention, and I'm sure um, uh, Kirk Douglas feels the same way in a much, la much larger, much larger example much larger uh, to a much larger degree <laughs> yeah thanks a lot everybody i'll we'll see you mm -hmm. yes and condolences to the family of kirk douglas uh and his, his sons daughters uh great people who've given great great works to uh, world culture he's got yeah. a grandson that's gonna be great yeah there you go thank you see ya